hurting children cries out to me. How this world is hurting children. How men are enslaving through their treasure little girls into horrible bondage in slavery. And you know what I'm talking about. Um, That's innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that are swift in running to evil. God works on us. You know, to be swift to run to evil is mean you don't even contemplate what you're hearing when he's saying, don't do that. (laughs) Um, He's not saying that, you know, you you want to avoid evil, of course. You're going to sin. And as you grow in Christ, you'll do that less. You will not be swift. Hopefully you don't turn that way at all. But the feet that are swift in running to evil, an abomination to God. A false witness who speaks lies. And one who sows discord amongst the brethren. That's someone who's sowing discord within the church. Guilty. Done it. And this is how. Gossip. I, in the past, have... Last year, it was a, a, we had a season of discord in this very church. Someone would come to me and say something about someone else in Christ. Some of you may have... Ex- it, it, it happens in churches a lot. About, it's a lot easier to appeal to the person that's in your presence than the one that's not. God doesn't call us to be like that. He doesn't call us to be like that. God forgive me, because I've done it. I'm supposed to satisfy God, not to the person that came to me and complained. And I don't know, you know, you say to yourself, well, Bill, you know, how can a Christian who loves someone even within their own brethren say things that are not uplifting? How can we uplift Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, by tearing down one of his children? How can we do that? So, you want to (laughs) know how to please God, and you're a little confused? Go there, start there, and work up. Pretty simple. Okay, back to Ephesians 5. So, look, let's look at verse 11. Earl may have had reservations about asking me to preach, but I know some of you have reservations for Mother's Day dinner, so we're going to work fast here. <laughs> Having nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention that we what mention what the disobedient do in secret. There's Proverbs six again, right there. God God's telling us loud and loud and clear what we're not to do. So God's talking about gossip here. We are not to build individual camps inside this body. We are one family, one church, under God. We have to be. Verse 13. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. That is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. What a promise. To, be, to receive the light from Christ and be shown upon by the Lord. There's nothing that's better than that. It's a golden light. It's a beautiful light. It's a pure light. And it feels marvelous doesn't it? Folks, a real promise from your Father. He continues in verse 15, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days we live in are evil. (laughs) Brothers and sisters, knowing our Savior as we do, 
Is it even possible to do the things that he abhors, that he hates with a clear conscience? That conviction that God gives us and says, don't go there. Well, he gives it to you before you do it. He gives it to Bill Pierce before he does it. I praise his name for doing that. He says, no, don't go there. God does, does, I got a question. Does Christ need us to defend him and his bride, the church, from other Christians? Shouldn't have to. But sometimes I don't know. I, I hear and I read that, that, that God created the universe and has an army of angels. So my guess is that he has that covered. He gives us the generalship of our own tongues in this battle. That's what he gives you. That's what you need to be in command of. Yes, we are to stand for Christ, but we have to face outward when we're standing on the wall for him. Not inward to battle amongst ourselves because then Satan has, a pit, has pit us against one another. We can't serve Jesus productively if we even remotely deceive another within the body or act in a self-serving manner. That is not how God operates. He wants us to be thoughtful and loving as we comfort those who hurt us within the church. He tells us to love folks who make a mistake. Mrs. Monroe didn't mean to go mental and do the wrong thing in managing her kid's situation with a skunk. My mom wasn't compelled by God to go scooting up the path and leave me with that boa constrictor that was laying in. <laughs> but we make mistakes and he'll forgive us of that. And he'll love us. I believe that when we have a problem with another person within the flock, we have to first ask ourselves, are we being deceived by the devil into believing that our brothers or sisters, other Christians, are somehow working to destroy our church? or even hurt our pastor. No, that's not their intention. But we have to look beyond what we are feeling personally and examine that within God's teaching and love. And God will anoint this church like you won't believe. Verse 17, Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Take a minute. Step back. What's the Lord's will? My question to you this morning is, are you really listening to what Christ's will is for your life and for your role in this body? Or are you seeking your own will? Are you seeking your own will for the future of this church? The very church family God has blessed you with. I look out, it's such a privilege. You've heard it from here before from other preachers. Other people that we've had in this church. Uh, I think of Shepherd Swain who's down in Peru preaching in this moment because God has called him to preach and he's down there doing that and he's my friend. And he's down there and I just pray that God would just lift that, that, that whole place up. And that Shepherd would be used of God. I think of Tom Dubois. And I think of this man right here who rose up those men within this body and taught them and mentored them with a loving and willing heart. Thank you, Earl. Thank you for following God's teaching. Thank you for allowing me to come up here and stumble along. That's fruit ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that's fruit. He's planted churches all over this state. God's used his life because he's allowed it. That's what we're to do. We're supposed to follow Christ's example. And he's given us a living example here. God being a good father may let us go our own way a while and allow us to get burned in order to learn that he is in charge and that his will will be done. There are always consequences, aren't they, when we mess up? <laughs> always. That poor woman had a lot of skunk cleaning to do. 